John, so tell us about Cheddar. It's really new, it's yes. growing quickly. We see it all over the place, live on Twitter and all over. So tell us from a publisher standpoint, you know, your take to going live, proliferating, uh, you know, really from, the, yeah. from a, a, a small spot, and also how the whole subscription thing works out. So we started on uh, April 11th, so not even a year, and it's a cable network, except instead of living on a cable box, it lives on Twitter at three o'clock every day and Facebook Live. We have our own channel on Sling TV in the base bundle right next to CNN. Uh, we're live as part of one of the Amazon bundles as well too. Um, and we'll have two more of these announced by, uh, by mid-year. And our bet was that in addition to wanting on-demand programming like House of Cards and Transparent, young people would have a need for uh, what I call ambient, non-appointment viewing to see what's happening. And that's effectively what Cheddar, Cheddar is. It's a, it's a live news network. So tell us how, um, you know, the subscription side of it and yes. also the... Um Advertising, if there is, so explain a little bit about the business. So we have two revenue lines right now. One is what I call Native 3.0. It's an in-show branded sponsorship. It's a live read with the lower third of the screen with the brand. So with HP, who sponsors all of our hardware, we do a keep reinventing segment. With Dunkin' Donuts, we do an on-the-go segment where we, where we profile busy executives and what keeps them going throughout the day. Fidelity, we use the Fidelity app live in the show to look up the stocks that we're talking about. Then we have direct subscription where people pay us a monthly fee, or we're in bundles where people are paying the bundles and we get a fee and the ability to monetize with advertising on those bundles as well. I think that the direct subscription model I think of as our restaurant regulars, they're people that just want cheddar and don't want a bundle, but ideally every skinny bundle out there, whether it's Sling or Amazon, I intend for us to be in those and the consumer can buy us that way. So what suggestions do you have for other publishers who are on sort of one dimensional or the value of going live? Not everyone should go live, but... I think that it's not about every publisher going live, it's looking where there is uh, white space. And, you know, if we were deciding now that we wanted to create little, vid little videos with text on Facebook that get a gajillion views, that would not be a good time to do this. Lots of people have done that. But I saw nobody recreating the MSNBC, CNN, CNBC for people under the age of 60. All those, all those channels have viewerships in their mid-60s. So that's what we decided to set out and do. I think people are gonna have connected TVs. They're gonna need to put something on those TVs when they're not watching um, you know, The Night Of or Game of Thrones. Uh, there's a lot of talk here and generally about fake news. Um, yeah. And it's not just the election uh, and what's happened along politics, but there's a lot in content marketing, a lot of stuff that's thrown around. Yeah. Um, what are some of your thoughts about uh, promoting content as news when it really isn't, or brands that sort Look, of I mean, the, 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 fake, the fake news thing is the fault of the social networks, uh, predominantly Facebook. There's no, if, if, if people just read credible sources, if you went to you know, BBC, New York Times, Washington Post, Cheddar even, uh, there would be no fake news. Fake news is a consequence of the fact that people got disoriented from what they were actually reading and this stuff was able to spread. So I think the solution is creating a system where there is more allegiance to um, reputable media brands. So it's not just like you're reading some random article from somewhere saying the Pope endorsed Donald Trump. Got it, got it. And, and, and finally, um, any thoughts about publishers starting out or the opportunities to create brands. I know you yeah. You have a, you know, obviously you've done this uh, clearly uh, with BuzzFeed, with Cheddar. Um, what, what are some of the pointers? I just think it has to be very different. I think that being very different in and of itself is not enough to guarantee success, but if you don't do something very different, you have no chance of being successful. So we chose to do only live video in business and technology news. There's no other startup doing that. Really, there's no one else doing it. There's lots of people doing fashion sites. There's lots of people doing politics sites. There's lots of people doing food sites. There's lots of people building sites with articles and images and doing video in those different spaces. I just think you've got to come up with something radically different um, and not try to go to where the puck is. You've got, you've got to make a bet as to where you think the puck is going to be.